It's nice to be back. So here we go, chapter 29. Uh, chapter 29, we're going to learn to relate the electric potential with the electric field uh, to combine these two things. So let's look at the electric potential. Just a little bit of uh, um, review here. So electric potential is defined as the uh, energy divided by the charge. And so typically we're interested in the change in the electric potential or the change in the electric potential energy. And so this equation is the one we'll sort of use more. And again, the, the difference between them is you're dividing by the charge. If I write this out, uh, there's an equation that we'll deal with a little bit today that you've seen, which says the change in the electric potential energy is the charge times the change in the potential. Now, an analogy I like to use is height. And so here I have a four-story building, and then I have a capacitor with positive and negative sides that's turned on its side. And so if you look at this green ball, if I raise it up four flights uh, to the top of the building, I've increased its gravitational potential energy. Uh, well, the same thing with this positive charge. If I move it from the negative end to the positive end, okay, I'm moving it closer to these positive charges where it doesn't want to be and further from the negatives where it does want to be. So I'm increasing its potential energy as well, just its electric potential energy. And so we got equations here that are pretty similar. So from 131, we've got the potential energy is mg. So this is the part of the equation that's got something to do with the particle we're talking about. It's its weight. And then delta y is the change in height that you move it through. And so now the new one is the charge. That's the part that depends on the particle that we're moving. It's the charge. And the delta v is kind of like the height. So that's what we want to try to get here is that electric potential is like the height in the mgy equation. Okay, and this little picture we had over here, right, by increasing it, it's like I'm sort of bringing it up a certain height. Okay. And then we can make another analogy with that, with this idea of equal potential lines. And so these are lines where uh, the potential uh, is the same. And so when it's gravity, the potential will be measured, these lines are measured in height, in meters. Okay, with our capacitor, they're measured in volts. And so again, along the same lines as our little equation here. And so the idea is, is if I'm in this building and I'm walking around at a height of 30 meters, okay, uh, I'm my potential energy is not changing. Well, the same thing here, okay? If I'm an electric charge and I'm moving around at some height uh, or some potential, 40 volts, all right, that means the change in V is not changing, and so I would have an increase or decrease in my potential energy of zero. Now, here is the equation we're going to use uh, to basically convert from electric field into potential. All right, and so this equation is an integral, so integrals are always a little bit nastier than other things. Uh, and so here, this is defined E sub S times dS, where S is basically Knight's generalization of any of the directions, x, y, or z. So if you're doing this, you would need to be in either the x, y, or the, the z axis. And so E S, E sub S, is the component of the electric field in some direction. So it might be the component in the x direction, or the y direction, so on and so forth. Now, uh, kind of a kinder, friendlier version of this is this one down here, and this is what I'll probably focus on. Uh, so uh, the voltage final equals the voltage initial minus the area under the curve. And so sometimes I'll write that as AUC, area under the curve, which is really what an integral is, right? It's the area under the, in this case, uh, the ES versus S curve. And so let's do an example here. So here we have a graph of the X component of the electric field along the X axis. The potential is zero at the origin. What is the potential at one meter? So pause this, work this through, and see what you come up with. All right, hopefully you got negative 1,000. If you didn't, let's walk through it. And so our equation is V final equals V initial minus the area under the curve. And so in this case, V final is the potential at one meter. V initial is zero, so we're starting that here at the origin. So when you do this, it's really important. You have your, this is our uh, final, and this is our initial. You always want to figure out what those are. And so basically, I want to find the area under the curve in between that. And so what's that going to be? Well, this is a triangle, so it's one half base times height. And so if I write this out, it's one half the base would be this length here, uh, which is one meter. The height is 2,000 volts per meter. So 2,000 volts per meter. When I multiply all that out, I get negative 
uh, 1,000 volts, okay? And so that's how I would find the potential at some other point if I'm given this. And again, we're using here, this is the EX, you know, so they write this E sub S. Here, it's the X component of the electric field. Uh, here's an example from the book, and this is one that I think causes people concern, so I wanted to go through it. Uh, and it's finding the electric field and finding the potential in a, uh, in a, for electric field inside a capacitor. And so this is a really important thing. We're going to talk about this a lot. And so we got our equation here. And so now my E uh, guy is going to be in the X direction. Okay, and so if we look at my little picture here, uh, we go ahead and we call where the, uh, the negatives are the zero position, and we have the, the positive direction going this way. And so they're, they're in our little picture here, they're calling that S. Uh, and so it's in the positive S direction. Okay, and so we want to set up our equation here. And so what I'm going to say is I want to find uh, the potential at some point S. And again, my initial potential, I'm going to start here at zero. That's zero. Okay, so that'll happen a lot. And then minus over here. Now what we're saying is the electric field inside a capacitor is constant. So the first thing we do is we pull out this ES outside of the integral sign. Okay, so now what does that mean? Well, the integral of DS is just going to be the length that we're talking about, so just going to be S. And so if I rewrite this equation, the zero goes away. I have negative ES uh, times what uh, are my S value. So if I start at zero, whatever my S value is, it increases again going this way here. Now here's the part that kind of messes with people, okay? And so in this case, if I'm to write out, so this E sub S is the electric field in the, the S component of it. And so here, we're defining positive S to go to the right. So our electric field is negative E, okay? The S component of our electric field, right, whenever you have a component, it can either point in this positive direction or it could point in the negative direction. And in this case, it points in the negative direction. So here I'm going to write E times S. All right, and so here's my final equation. My uh, potential at some S value is just the electric field times S. So it goes linear. And so if I was to say graph this, so here's the potential versus S, it would be some nice linear function like so. And so a couple things here. First of all, the potential or the electric field, rather, points downhill. The electric field is pointing in the negative direction, and so it sort of points downhill according to this potential. Uh, that's one thing we want to get out there. And then also, it's, like I said, it's a linear increase. And so here, where the electric field is constant in between the capacitor, uh, this, uh, we're, our potential is going to increase linearly. So let's try an example now. So here's another one to pause and work on. So a capacitor has a plate separation of 0.2 meters. If the voltage difference between the plates is 50 volts, what is the magnitude of the E field halfway between the plates? So pause and try this one, and we'll talk about it. All right, hopefully you got 250. So this one's actually kind of a trick. Uh, it doesn't matter where you pick in between because the E field inside a capacitor is constant. Uh, so I didn't give you any indication of which end is which. Let's just call that 0 and this 50 just to make life easier. And we know that the distance here, which I might call maybe delta S, is 0 0.2 meters. And so we're trying to find the uh, electric field halfway in between. And so we know our nice equation, Vs equals E uh, times my S position. So we've set this up exactly like that diagram we just had a second ago. And so if I take this and solve for the electric field, I get electric field equals my potential at point S divided by S. And so if I write this over here, sorry to be a little bit messy, 50 volts divided by 0 0.2 meters, and I get 250 volts per meter if I do that. All right, so we've got an equation here to go from the E field from the potential. We like to develop uh, an equation to get the E field or for, to get the E field from the potential. So do the opposite, basically. Now the book just gives you this. I'd like to somehow, at least a little bit, justify this. And so here, I'm going to swing the uh, uh, potential over here, so it's V final minus V initial, which we can call delta V, equals negative, uh, again, the component of electric field in the S direction times dS. Now, I'm going to do this for a very small distance, 
uh, delta s so small that I can assume that my es is basically constant. So I'm basically cheating, but that's okay. It's uh, better than just giving you the equation. So here I got delta potential equals negative es delta s. And so if this is so tiny, then basically the integral sign disappears, and it's e times delta s. And when we're dealing with deltas, we have a relationship kind of like this right here. So e sub s equals negative delta v over delta s. And in fact, if you do this officially, it actually works out to be correct for the integral, or for the derivative, rather. So the electric field in some direction is equal to uh, the negative of the derivative of the potential with respect to that direction. And so this is uh, the way to go the other way. If you know the potential, you can find the electric field. So let's look at this example from the book. So in the book, they, they have, here's the electric field, and here's the potential, uh, and you have this nice potential function. So first of all, uh, if you calculate this, uh, if you take the negative derivative, so here's my function vx, the negative derivative would be negative 1,000 xv. And then when the negatives cancel, it's 1,000 times x uh, volts per meter, all right? And that's what the graph is over here. It's that 1,000 times x volts per meter. So this equation seems to work in this case. Uh, conceptually, what you can notice here is as you go along this line, the slope, okay, dv dx gets steeper and steeper. So it gets larger and larger uh, in a negative way. It gets more and more negative, the slope does. All right, And so the slope gets more and more negative. The slope is dv dx. And then because of this negative sign, when we do the electric field, it actually goes the opposite way. So this is kind of tricky. Uh, but here, so this is basically steadily getting more and more negative. But because that negative sign, our actual electric field gets more and more positive. That's how that relationship works um, in this case here. And again, our relationship that we're talking about is, is that the electric field points downhill. In this case, in this problem, the electric field is pointing in the positive direction. It's getting more and more positive. And so our potential, the electric field, has a tendency to point downhill. Uh, so let's look at this example here, another one. At which point is the electric field stronger, XA or XB? All right, hopefully you got XA. If you look at these points, again, uh, the electric field, the magnitude of it is just going to be the slope dV dx. And so if we're just talking about how strong it is, we don't care about the sign. There's the slope of that guy. And over here, this slope is much more gentle. And so X of A is a much larger slope. And so the electric field would be bigger there. Um, here's a little picture from the book that just kind of talks about some of the characteristics of electric field comparisons with potential. So first of all, the electric field is always 90 degrees to the potential. Okay, as we were talking about, if I'm a charge and I move down some potential line, all right, there's no change in my energy, which means there can be no work done by the electric field. And so the electric field has to be 90 degrees, so there's no work done. Uh, the field points downhill. So in this case here, we're talking about this potential being larger than this negative potential. And so the electric field has a tendency to point downhill. So it points at 90 degrees to the potential, and it points downhill. If you have your potential lines, you can always sort of get the direction of electric field right away. And the final thing is the field strength is inversely proportional to the spacing between them. Okay, and that just comes from this new equation that we got here. Okay, basically, if you can, you can think about this in kind of a rough way as delta V over delta X. And as the delta X gets smaller, okay, between two lines, then the electric field is going to get bigger. So these lines are telling you the change in the potential. And whenever it's closer together, you're going to have a stronger electric field. Like over here, this one's really big because you're basically dropping, okay, between these two lines much faster than you are over here. Uh, and along these lines, there can be a lot of comparisons. We'll talk about this in class of comparing this to a topographic map. So here's some topographic map that's got little, uh, uh, you know, points uh, of, of separate height. Okay, and again, there's a lot of comparisons between potential and heights. And so, uh, you know, this point here is basically the same height. And one thing we get is that on a topographic map, the, the closer the lines are together, the steeper it is right there. That's a direct analogy to the electric field. These were 
potential lines, the electric field would be very strong right here and it would point downhill. Okay, so you can think about these pictures sometimes as being like topographic maps. And so here's just a couple little uh, quick pictures. And so what, what's going to happen is on the right, you've got the sort of the picture where we got the equipotential lines and then the electric field lines set up. So this one's decreasing 60, 50, 40 down. And then what I'm doing is I'm looking at the side. So it's kind of like my eye is looking this way and you see this picture here. And so again, it's like height, uh, and this is a between a capacitor. So a capacitor, the electric field's constant. The lines have the same spacing, and the potential steadily decreases. Again, the field points downhill. Um, and we have uh, another kind of picture. This you'll see this is real common. This is a positive charge and a negative charge. And so we'll see that positive charges are kind of like little hills and negative charges are kind of like little valleys. All right. And so this little line here is like your topographic map. It's the same potential. So it's kind of like this little point here. It's the same height in potential. And then you can draw a little circle around that little mountain. You can walk around that mountain if you wanted to. And so the electric field also a tendency to point downhill. So again, I'm kind of looking at the side here and I'm doing kind of a cutoff right through here uh, with this picture. And here's some other pictures. The book will have things kind of like this, but you can always draw these things in sort of analogies to height. Uh, so one last question here. An electron is released from rest at x equals to 2 meters in the potential shown. What does the electron do right after being released? All right. So hopefully you got move to the left with increasing speed. So this is the potential, all right? And we can kind of think about the potential again as being like this is kind of like a positive and over here is kind of like a negative. And so if I put an electron here, okay, the electron is going to be attracted uh, up way this way here. And then you can imagine that our equation, again, is delta U equals Q delta V. All right, and so what's happening as the electron moves closer to the positive charge, okay, it's, it's increasing its potential, and so it's losing uh, potential energy because the electron has a charge of negative V times delta V, and so its um, potential energy is going to decrease and its kinetic energy is going to increase, and so it's going to have increasing speed. All right, and the last thing we want to talk about are batteries. We're going to deal with the batteries a lot over the next couple of weeks. And just real quick, uh, how batteries work. So electric circuit will generally transfer energy from a battery to some device. Uh, the battery is an object that uh, usually works chemically, okay, to transfer chemical energy into electrical energy. And basically what it does is it somehow, through some mechanism, transfers electrons from positive terminal to the negative terminal. And so this gives the terminals a potential difference. One thing we learned in chapter 29 is whenever you separate charges, you get a potential difference. And so the battery does this. We're not going to care too much how it does this. And my little cartoon picture I like to draw is you can think about a little conveyor belt. Okay, it's kind of just going back and forth and electrons are carried on this conveyor belt over to this side. And so you got a bunch of electrons here, you got a bunch of atoms without electrons here that turns positive, and then basically this little conveyor belt keeps it so it's got some potential separation. Like for instance, a car battery would have a difference of 12 volts. Okay, and the book has a similar kind of picture. Now in their picture, they draw this little thing, it's like a little escalator, and it's moving positives from the negative end to the positive end. Now this is kind of easier to picture, and, and actually it makes no difference. It doesn't matter if you bring positives to one side or negatives to the other, as long as you separate.